you think that, oh, because I have bad performance, I need more practice. So you then you shorten your break again from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, not knowing that because you are low in energy, causing a bad performance. So you just, okay, okay, I should practice more. Then you go for the next hole again. And then you have even worse performance. Overgrazing, the word over in geography. Whenever we say it's overgrazing, over cultivation, over champling, whatever we're starting with over, it means that exceeding the carrying capacity of the land resource. So give you an example. Let's say I have a plot of land, pasture land, that can theoretically support 10 cows, 10 cattle. But then the farmers, because it's driven by profit, right? want to make a living, want to support the family, want to have a better life, then the farmers say, okay, I'm now raising 15 cattle rather than 10. So if it's just 10, it is basically a feed for the carrying capacity. But when the farmer raise 15 cows, 15 cattle, then it's exceeding the capacity. Kind of like, you know, the, the music chair, right? You just go around and then when the music stop, see who, who are left without the chair. So it's kind of like that in the sense that the land can only support 10 cows, but there are 15 of them. So the pastures are not enough for the cows to eat. So some of them end up not eating enough. There's not much pasture left. So when the next cycle, next like cattle raising cycle comes, there's not that pasture, not much pasture available. Eventually the pasture run up faster. So that becomes a vicious cycle. That's why we call it overgrazing. It's exceeding the carrying capacity. But how can we link overgrazing to desertification? So now you mentioned the land is unprotected. It's barren land, right? Barren soil because there's no pasture. So what happened is after overgrazing, there's not much pasture left, right? All the pasture are consumed. So the land becomes barren because there's no vegetation cover. It's just barren soil. Like you can see the soil particles with visible, like your naked eyes. So what happens is when we have soil erosion caused by rainwater, the rain splash effect of rainwater falling down is going to displace the soil particles because it's kind of small, right? We say the rain splash effect is kind of the tiny bombs. Like every single raindrop is like a tiny bomb dislocating the, the soil particle. And strong wind also blows away the top soil particles just like if you have you go to the beach and you kind of lie down on the beach and you blow like strong wind with your mouth over the top like beach surface then you are going to blow the sand away it's the same thing so what happens is when the top soil is removed away from the soil structure because most of the time these top soil are loosened they're not attached to the rock like every soil particle is by themselves like they're not connected to each other through a like blue or whatever. So they are there when we have vegetation, vegetation would bind the soil tightly, that's why they can remain in place. But when the vegetation are gone, there's no root to bind them. So they become loosened. And when we have soil erosion, the top soil is gone. So when we don't have top soil, then we can not grow new vegetation because, well, the seed cannot like be in place, it's going to be washed away, or the vegetation cannot bind the soil again. Kind of like it, it becomes barren rock surface rather than soil. Just like you can't grow plants on rock surface, you have to grow it on soil surface. So as a result, it becomes the, the soil is now not good for vegetation growth. That's why we have desertification. It's all sand particles or loose soil particles. It's not supportive of vegetation growth. Okay, so that is the direct result. Whatever we say, overgrazing, deforestation, overcultivation, that is the first step. The first one. The second step is soil erosion. Then the first step, uh, desertification. We we'll talk about overgrazing. The next one we have overcultivation. So now that you know what is overgrazing, 
how it causes deforestation. Can you explain to me that how over-cultivation causes desertification? A very simple definition of soil fertility is nutrient in the soil. Yeah, so it's as simple as that. So fertility means whether it's fertile or not, right? Fertile means whether it's flavorable for farming. So if we think about oh, soil fertility, it is the amount of nutrient in the soil, okay? So because crop growth or plant growth, they require a certain type of nutrient, usually nitrogen, or the other one would be phosphorus. Again, over cultivation, the farmer is trying to increase crop production, increase the crop yield. We say that crop yield is the harvest, basically. So uh, in geography, we use crop yield rather than just harvest. Yeah, more professional. So they grow, the farmers try to grow more intensively by applying more fertilizer because intensive farming means in a same plot of land, we have a lot of farming input. So farming input would be labor, fertilizer, capital, and machine. So these are all farming input. Output would be the crop growth yeah, and the waste, like crop residue. So useless output. And so by adding input, more fertilizer, we say that we're growing the crop more intensively. Yeah. And if we want to grow more extensively, it means we are expanding the area of farmland. Okay. So intensive more means same plot of farmland, we grow more, we try to grow more. But extensively means we try to expand the size of the farmland in order to grow more. Okay. So that's intensive farming and extensive farming. Uh, example would be intensive farming would be rice growing, paddy growing. Uh, extensive farming would be cattle ranching. Yeah, raising livestock in a large farm. Yeah. So what happened is, let's assume the farmer cannot afford fertilizer because in some poor region, the farmer cannot afford fertilizer, but they still want to grow more. So they try to grow more on the same plot of land. As a result, there will be more crops absorbing the soil nutrient. And as a result, at a faster rate, the soil nutrient will deplete. And we say that, oh, when the farmer is trying to grow more and the following period is shortened because the farmer tried to grow more, right? So it either reduce the following period, following means grow nothing, just leave the land alone, kind of like resting. So then the soil nutrient cannot recover. So basically you can think of like you play golf, right? I, I heard that you play golf. So you can think of you play the first hole and then let's say usually you take a break of one hour, but now you are saying, okay, I'm preparing for competition. So I need to play more intensively. So then you reduce the break from one hour to 30 minutes, but then your body has not recovered yet. So you're still tired. Your energy level is not fully recovered. So then you go to the next hole and then you, oh, you're you low, low in energy. So you miscalculate your, your swing and then you have a bad performance, right? And then you think that, oh, because I have a bad performance, I need more practice. So you, then you shorten your break again from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, not knowing that because you are low in energy causing a bad performance. So you just, okay, okay, I should practice more. Then you go for the next hole again. And then you have even worse performance. So that is the Fisher cycle. We say that your energy level is kind of like the soil nutrient fertility. Yeah. So eventually the land become unproductive, just like you become like your performance suffer because you are low in energy level. You can't control your muscle. You just swing it heavily. And then kind of, uh, you cannot fine tune your like minor angle or muscle. I don't know, like I don't play golf. So, but anyway, so you can imagine yourself as playing golf and your energy level is not enough, then your performance will suffer and the crop yield is going to suffer in the case of farming. Okay. So that means that in the next harvest, there will be less available nutrient. So then the farmer keeps on doing the same 
because the farmer do not know how much nutrient in the soil. It's not like you play games, right? There's a, like a bar where it shows the energy level or, or whatever status. But in real life, that's like the soil is not going to tell you, oh, I, I, I'm short of nutrient. Don't grow so much crop on me, right? So it means that eventually the farmer, when the farmer figure out he has done something bad, it's already too late. Like the land has become unproductive. That's what we call soil degradation. It means the quality of the soil is now worse off. When we have too many cattle, too many livestock, all walking around, there will be trampling of the pasture. So basically, the cow and the sheep stepping on the grass, killing it, because too many of them. So rather than eating it, they killed it. So eventually, over trampling not only killed the pasture, but also damaged the soil structure, because the soil structure will get compressed. Like soil is supposed to be loose and kind of not compact, right? You can imagine the soil as a piece of bread. Like you go to a bakery, you buy a piece of bread, you expect it to be like fluffy, right? Not hot, compact, like a, like a piece of ham, right? So like a piece of bacon. So, but if you compress that piece of bread, you can make it into like a, a bacon, right? So very uh, stringy and difficult to bite and chew. So that is the same mechanism. We say that the loose soil are now compressed and end up being compact, too compact. So the vegetation root cannot travel or cannot grow on compact soil because the roots are very soft, right? They're not like uh, steel or wire. So the vegetation root, when they cannot like penetrate through the compact soil, they cannot grow. So no vegetation can grow on compact soil. Let's also talk about something other than deforestation and poor management of soil. Let's talk about water consumption. This may not be very applicable in arid environment, but semi-arid environment would be applicable. Do you know why? Arid region is a desert. Would you expect desertification in a desert? Arid and not arid is based on the climate, not based on the landfall. Okay, so desert is a landfall, it's a landscape. So it is a result of climate, but not the cause of climate. Okay, in a desert, we don't expect desertification because it's, it's a desert. So it's usually places where it's already kind of dry, but not very dry. But compound with poor human management of water resources and deforestation, poor agricultural practice, then they will have desertification and that location become a desert. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about in the context of semi arid region, what are the poor water management or poor water use practice? First one, improper use of agricultural water because 70% of fresh water use is consumed by the agricultural sector. 70% of water use or fresh water use. So there's a lot. Individual use, let's say drinking, showering, washing, accounts for a very tiny portion of freshwater use total. So after agriculture is industrial use, for example, power generation, cooling of machine, food and beverage industry, right? So those account for way more water use than domestic use. Yeah. So let's say a waste stage of agricultural resource. We have two types. First, we have excess irrigation. Excessive means they're pouring a lot of water, way more than necessary. Okay. So excessive use, eventually the water is waste through surface runoff, just flow away into nearby river, into nearby pond, or go to the sea. The other one would be, or sometimes evaporated. Uh, in efficient e irrigation, we say that mm, it is not the best or not the most efficient use of water. Again, it could be something like flood irrigation. The most efficient, we say, is drip irrigation. Drip irrigation, have you heard about it? The water flow through the water pipe and they punch several holes on the 
on the holes. Yeah, holes on the holes. And then also it's very close to the soil surface. So it means that less water is evaporating, less water is waste through surface runoff. So every droplet will be absorbed by the soil because it's dropping slowly. And they can also have a precise measure of the amount of water used. So usually drip irrigation is connected to a computer. So it can be timed and it can also connect to a different monitor inside the soil to monitor soil moisture. So all these recorded precision agriculture. It means that the farmer can control the amount of water use and even fertilizer use. Sometimes they will mix the fertilizer into the water. So it's all in one go, basically. Sometimes it's kind of like you're drinking milk powder, but like you get different nutrients all in one go. That's why uh, this is the most efficient way to so far into making more efficient use of water. Yeah. Reduce waste stage, also cut costs as well. No centralized water management. So this is about river. So sometimes authority and government build dams, right? Build a dam and reservoir for water use for hydroelectric power generation, whatever the purpose. But sometimes along the same river, there are different authorities, sometimes even different countries. Controversy or conflict between water use is, yeah, Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Along with Egypt, some other countries are trying to stop the construction and they fell. So they try to stop the filling of the dam and they fell. So Ethiopia is trying to just build a dam to make sure it has enough water supply, fresh water supply. But when you build such a large dam in the upper course of the river, you're reducing a lot of water flowing downstream, affecting a lot of river discharge. So that's why downstream countries are going to protest because it is also from a strategic perspective. What if you close all the floodgate, you stop all the water flowing downstream and you make it strategic, you weaponize the dam, then you can basically cut off huge amount of fresh water supply to the downstream country. Yeah. And what if you all of a sudden open all the floodgate, such large body of water is released to the downstream, it will cause massive flooding and damage. So from both the domestic perspective, the economic perspective, agricultural perspective, and military strategic perspective, a dam in the upstream country is very dangerous. And yeah, you can understand why geopolitical wise, country are going to against such a construction. Even within one country, there could be different authority not coordinating the water supply because there could be different provinces, different state. They all prioritize their local water use, right? Because, well, I want to make sure my state or my province is benefiting from the water use. So it doesn't matter further downstream are uh, the province are doing. I'm going to prioritize my water use. So that is uh, understandable, but from central government perspective, it might not be the best. Yeah, coordination is necessary. And finally, we have over abstraction and pumping. Again, do you recall what is over? We just mentioned it. Yeah, the key is exceeding the carrying capacity. And so we withdraw groundwater. So river water are usually uh, replenishable better because you have snow melt, you have rainfall. So rainwater are usually less likely to dry off. But groundwater is more likely to dry, dry up because it takes such a long time to build the groundwater level. If you think about where do we get groundwater, it's from the rainfall infiltrating layers upon layers of the soil further down along the way. So we have to ignore water flowing inside the soil layer horizontally, but it has to keep flowing vertically to reach the groundwater level. So 
it takes a long time to accumulate, but it takes a very short amount of time to abstract it, right? Because abstraction of groundwater is very fast. You get a bucket of it, but how long does it take for rainwater equivalent of that bucket amount to infiltrate to the groundwater? Probably takes quite some time. Yeah, that's why the regeneration rate or the recharge rate of groundwater is very slow, way slower than river. But the abstraction rate could be similar, maybe just slightly lower than river abstraction. But when the rate of abstraction is faster than the rate of regeneration or recharge, then the groundwater level is going to decrease. Just like if you play games on your mobile phone. And if you're charging the mobile phone, but when the game is consuming so much battery, then your battery is still going to decrease, right? So, and sometimes you get the warning from the phone saying you're draining way faster. It's going to damage the battery health. So it will suggest you either not charge or not play the game. So that is it. Any questions?